Hello everyone. Hello YouTube. Hello, hello. Hey, we're here. We're finally here. This uh, vid has been in the making for a while, to be honest. And I've encountered some problems and stuff, but it's finally here. So, a lot of people have been asking for this as well. The Kazuya Guide. Basically, it is kind of a guide. I didn't want to call it a guide at first, but I guess it is kind of a guide. So we're going to be talking about this character and uh, how I think you should use his moves. The most used moves and the most strongest moves he has. Which, of course, is all personal opinion from me, right? It's all uh, in my head, in my mind. My opinion. So yeah. So the way we're going to do this is very, very simple. I don't want to overcomplicate it too much. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the three states that Kazuya is in, in general. You might ask, why three states, right? It's only two states, outside of heat and inside of heat. But there's actually three states. So the three states are outside of heat, with heat available, outside of heat, when heat is unavailable, so when you already used it, and inside of heat. So those are the three states. So first, we're going to talk about the character more in general, and you're also going to be talking about the states that we're going to be the most in, at least most likely we're going to be the most in, is... Um, the state when we have heat, but we are outside of heat. So this state right here, which I, I mean, right now in practice mode. So, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the best moves he has in each property. So highs, mids, and lows. So we're gonna start with highs, and we're gonna continue from there. And I'm also gonna be talking about how to use each one in a in a way that I think will be most optimal or or the best for me right of course so highs in the high department we don't have too much going on for us it, it's okay so the best thing we can do is our jab strings so our jabs are good and our 10 frame punishment because of that is also good and by jabs i mean jab strings so one twos and one one is not bad at all Especially our 1 1 2 is our 10 frame punish, which gives us a knockdown, right? And this hit confirm. It's not hard to hit confirm at all, so you can 1 1, and then a 2, if you see a hit. It's very strong. So you can use 1 1 even on block to pressure someone in minus 1 situations like this. But you have to be careful because your jabs are very steppable. Both ways are very, very walkable. So you have to be very careful. And when it comes to just his 1 jab, so just this, if you throw this out. It's not bad to do this occasionally, but Kazuya's one jab is not that good compared to most of the cast. So this can be stepped easier and doesn't have a good hitbox in general. So you have to be very careful because this might whip on things that it should not whip. For example, maybe Paul's down 4 2. Or for example, Shaheen's down 4 2. This might just go over it and you might get launched because this will whip. So the jab isn't the best. But his jab strings like 1-1 one, one, and 1-2 one, can be still usable. And 1-2 especially can be used because 1-2, uh, even though it's minus 3 on block, as you guys can see, minus 3, you have extension after the 1-4. to four. So most people will be looking out for this 1-4. to four. So they will respect the 1-2 and if they are looking out for it, they will either not press anything, not sidestep, not backdash, or all of the above. The most they can do, if they are looking out for it, is just backdash. So if they just backdash, if they're looking out for it, maybe that's the most kind of movement they will do. But if they respect it, most likely they will stay still and not sidestep or do anything. I mean, they can also, outside of the just backdash part, they can also do a sidestep into a low pair if they expect it, but it's a little bit less likely can also happen. So 1-2, using it as a pressure tool on block can also work because of this extension. But be careful because it is minus 14 and it can be launched by certain characters like Jin for example, Raven for example, Kazuya himself. So yeah, be careful about that. Even if you finish the last hit, which is the 1-2-4-3. So yeah, that's about the 1-2s and the jab strings in general. We did get a new jab string which is 1-2-3, this cancel. But personally, I don't find any use for this. I couldn't find it. Maybe maybe I can't, maybe you guys can, but I don't have anything good to say about this. I don't know how to use this move well. 
Okay, let's go on to the next one. So back one, two. This our 11 frame Punisher. It's an amazing time. It's very, very good because it's only minus 14. Right? Sometimes you can confirm it. I've confirmed it sometimes, but it's hard to do. It's not easy to do. It's a little bit easier to confirm on counter. Just a little bit easier. But it's not a hit confirmable at all. At all. I would not say so. But sometimes it is possible. And the best way for me to use this move is at the wall. Since it's an 11 frame punisher, of course you can whiff punish with this after a sidestep, like sidestep back one, two. And you're gonna get the wall splat into good damage. Note that I might not be using optimal combos, for, right, for the damage, but it's still good damage, whatever I did right there. Or you can just, outside of punishment, also just throw this out. If you think your opponent's gonna get, get hit anyway, in their, like, their pressure or your pressure. Just to, so you can get a wall splat, and as I said, it's not that punishable. It's only minus 14. Only certain characters can launch this. Xiaoyu being one of them, Brian being one of them, Lars being one of them, and maybe some other characters that I can't think of right now. But yeah, those characters can launch this move. So yeah, back one two is amazing, maybe a punisher, but you can also throw it out at the wall, and sometimes maybe even confirm it at the wall, just so you can get that wall splat into big damage. Very, very good move, one of my favorite moves. But yes. Next is 2 2. So this guide might be a little bit long, guys. I'm gonna try to explain things a little bit more briefly than I would normally, but it's still gonna be a long video because it's a full on guide. So, 2 2. So this move is minus 8 on block, it's safe, and it's not natural. But it is natural on conflict. So the main usage of this move is to check people. So they don't press. Basically, you're using this as a counter tool, right? Maybe you're gonna do down back four, which we're gonna talk about later in the lows department, into two two, so they don't press, right? Something like that. Obviously, it's gonna be weak to something like high crushes because it is a high and stuff like that. But it's also not that good on block, even though it's not punishable. You are gonna be right in their face and minus eight. And one of the things that Kazuya doesn't like, he really dislikes this, is being in their face. He really does not like it, especially in minus frames. So yeah, 2-2 two -two is mainly going to be used as a counter tool. Next one is going to be Magic 4, which is another counter tool. Right? So, standing 4. Just 4. This move is an another counter tool, to give you a free forward, forward, forward here. Right? It's not bad at all. Decent damage. And it's a pancake flip, so you flip the opponent over, and you can then uh, go go in and mix them up again, basically. So it's not bad at all, but the weakness this move has is its bad range. As you guys see, sometimes it just goes over them. Like sometimes it looks like it should hit, but it doesn't. So the range of this move isn't the best. Also, it's easily steppable easily stepple and the whiff property it has isn't the best either so you have to be careful about using something like this but it still can be used as a counter property for the counter property i mean because it's decent 444 guaranteed not bad at all now let's talk about back four so back four is a 17 frame tracking high which is decently fast not that slow and this is a heat engager. So this will automatically shift you into heat, and you will be mixing them up instantly after that. I'll be talking about the heat state a little bit later, as I already said. But uh, back one plus two, really, really good move. Really, really, not back one plus two, back four. Really, really good move. You can use it to stop people from stepping sometimes. You can use it to check someone from long range, because there's decent range. But be careful, because if they duck it, they will be launching you for it, because the whiff recovery isn't the best. It's not that bad, but you'll most likely get launched if they duck it. Okay. Next one is going to be one of the new moves he has, the sidestep 1 plus 2. So sidestep 1 plus 2 is a 19 frame high, which will come out slower because it's a sidestep move, but it's a plus 5 high. So you can use this at 4 plus frames, but usually at the wall. Because outside of the wall, it gives a little bit of distance. And most of the time, the Gazio player will feel like dashing in before pressing any buttons. Because if they're going to backdash, they might make something with. 
So usually at the wall this might be useful, but I personally don't use, that, use it that much. So be careful about that. Now let's talk about the strongest high he has. And maybe the strongest move he has. It's debatable, but... It's electric. If only I could electric, but yeah, electric. This is his strongest high. So this, at its fastest, can come out at 13 frames. If you're like, do a perfect electric, which, you know, is very hard to do. Like right now, I did the perfect electrics there with 4 down, down, 4 2, which will come out in 13 frames. But it's very hard to do and not realistic at all. You won't be punishing minus 13 with this at all. The most realistic thing, the most realistic thing you can think of is this coming out in 15 frames. So basically we can count this as a 15 frame high normal hit launcher that at the fast it can come out to 13, sometimes 14, but most of the time it's gonna be 15 or a bit slower than that. Especially in the neutral. So it's very strong because you can control people with this. The main usage of this move is when you are in mid-range, which is when Kazuya is at its strongest, and you just throw this out, so people are afraid to come in, right? This is a keep out electric. This is one of the best ways you can utilize this in the neutral, outside of punishment, right? When it comes to punishment, this move is also very strong, because you can also sidestep some moves and punish with an electric, right? Or backdash something and punish with an electric. This is technical, this is not easy to do, it requires practice, but it is possible. It's quite good to do, because even if you mess up and they block it, it's not really punishable, unless you mess up you know, with this, which is minus 10. So if you do the correct electric version, it's actually plus 5 on block. Although in the neutral, you can't really use it that, that much on block, I mean, because it creates so much space, you're basically going back into neutral. You can use some long range moves like forward 3 or back 4, but usually they don't have enough range, usually. The main mind game here is electric into an electric, even on block. So double electric on block here beats any kind of button retaliation they might do because it's a frame trap if you do it fast enough. So if they jab, they will get hit. But it loses to them pe being patient because the second electric will whiff. Even though electrics are very hard to whiff punish, they're not easy at all. It's still possible, especially if they are waiting for it. So you have to be careful about that. And now, for the special mentions, I just want to mention this because it's like an 8. It's throws. Doesn't matter what kind of throw. So this is the side-changing throw, which is his best throw in my opinion. It's his best OK. If they stand up in any way, down 4 2 is guaranteed there, for example, right? If they don't stand up, you can use something like a stomp or 4 4 4 Most like 4 4 4 So that's his best throw. But why, why am, I, am I mentioning throws? It's because in Tekken 8, these are 12 frames, right? They're 12 frames fast. Even the 1 plus 2 ones, they're 12 frames fast. For Kazuya, anyway. And they track really, really well both sides. So this can be used as a tracking tool, like a tracking high. And it also can be used as a counter tool. Because in this game, in Tekken 8, counter throws are very hard to break. They're basically unbreakable. It's possible, but basically unbreakable. So you can use this as a tracking high counter checks or checks in general so they are decently good to use the only problem we have is that we're playing Kaz who doesn't have the best of throws with his best one being his generic one that changes sides right so yeah that's about highs we don't have too many but they're okay now we have to go to mids now the mids we have a lot of so let's go slowly and um, talk about each one of them. So first, let's talk about 1 plus 2. This is our 12 frame Punisher, which to be honest isn't the best for me because we already have back 1 2, which I talked about, which I find superior. But you can also use this as a Punisher if you want a little bit of a better knockdown. Because in this knockdown, they cannot tech roll, right? And the knockdown is a little bit better for you, but the way are they are very far away. This kind of Ogi gives you a 3-4-4-2 if they try to stand up. But if they don't try to stand up, 
you will get punished for this with either while standing four if they have it they know how to punish with it right or with the launch of while standing three if they have it which is the worst case scenario so we i'll be very careful about using this that's why i usually prefer back one two punishment other than one plus two next one is down forward four we, oh and i almost forgot to mention this move can also be used at the wall in some kind of block situations if they try to pressure you or you think they're gonna press something you can just use this throw it out because it all lost black right it's not bad to do because it's not that punishable on block it's minus 13. no one will be able to launch this but you might get punished for it with like a good 12 frame punisher or something similar not that bad the down forward four right so this is one of the most important mids kazuya has this move down forward four because this covers his weak side so if they try to step to the left, let's say they step to the left, side block left, this will cover that side. Let me make it block. Right? Most of the time this can cover that side. There are some situations where you can't in some frame situations, but most of the time this is a great move to cover your weak side. Especially in some poke kick situations or some uh, plus frame situations that aren't too much plus, right? What I'm talking about is like plus two, three, four, five, something like that. So this move is very good and very important for those kind of situations. Let's go back to block all. So it's really good. And if you're good enough, you can also hit confirm this into the four, which will give you decent damage. Although you are going to be in minus, minus four. It's not that bad because you're going to be forcing crouch on your opponent and dealing 26 damage, which is, I think, worth it for the hit confirm. But you have to be careful about doing this on block because it is, it is launch punishable. Sometimes I do this on block as well, just to make my opponent respect my down forward 4 a bit more. It's down forward 4 by itself is minus 9. It's not punishable, but it's minus 9, which is really bad. But the extension is minus 50, which you can launch. It can become minus 14, sometimes, very rarely. But I would really count on that. I would not count that at all. So a yeah, very important mid to check your opponent for sidewalking or sidestepping. Very, very important, especially against after plus frames, like for example, down back four, which is plus four. We're gonna talk about this move in the low section later. You can use down forward four right afterwards, so just so they cannot step you to the left. They can step it, however, to the right, so you have to be careful. And then you know play mind games with that. Now let's talk about one of his new moves, and I think one of his best additions is Down Back 1. I love this move. I be, I've been wanting this move for a while, and now we have it. So this move is a 13 frame mid, Down Back 1, right? Without the 2. It's minus 10 on block. It's not the best, but you, you're not gonna just throw this out as a poke anyway. Definitely not. That's not the main use of And it's 0 on hit. So it's not good as a poke. We're not using it as a poke. This is a punishment tool. So all we are going to use this for is either punishing minus 13 stuff, because it's 13 frames fast, with this, which does 30 damage, and goes in the heat. It's a heat in future. It's really good. But not only it's just for that, it's also for whiff punishment from far away range. It doesn't have the best of ranges, but it can reach from pretty, pretty far, like 2.3 or something like that. It can still reach. So the range is decently good. It's not that good, but it's decently good. The main utility this has is uh, it was one of God's weaknesses in previous games was that you could not punish stuff which high crushed. For example, I'll give you an example right now. Something like this move. Not this move. Like this move. Generic down for it, right? Which high crushes. Because you can't punish this with jabs. Or back 1-2, for example, because it high crushes, it avoids highs. Normally, Gazia players would not be able to punish stuff like this unless they were very ready for it with a down 4-4 or something like that. But now we have a down back 1, right? Which can punish stuff from far away, even though they're avoiding highs. So yeah, it's a very, very good addition addition for me personally i really like this move and there's a lot of other utilities as well but usually in heat i'll be talking about that a little bit later when we go into the heat section so 
Now let's talk about one of his other best moves, Dawn 4 2. So this is a very, very important move. Most Mishima players do get the Mystic version of the Electric, so if you miss with Electric, you can't do Dawn 4 2. But Dawn 4 2 by itself is also very, very good. It's a 14 frame tracking mid that's plus 5 on hit, which to be honest isn't the best. You can't really use this plus 5 that much as a Kazuya player. But it's plus 5 on hit, and it's a counter launcher. They can use this to you know, launch someone, right? With decent damage in the 70s. Of course, we all know that you can also do the perfect electric heal, but I'm not really good at it. And you can mess it up. I have made a separate video about that. If it's worth it or not, so you can check that out. Check that out and, uh, you know, tell me what you think. But we're not going to talk about that now. We're going to talk about the utility for down forward 2. So the main way you use this move is to stop people from pressing against you while you are in plus. So you want to get the counter hit, so you use this. Although be careful because it is minus 12 on block. It's not the, the worst, it's not minus 14 or anything, right? But minus 12, you'll still be punished for it with a good 12 framer, basically. So be careful about that. And the main utility on the other main utility also is to catch people from sidewalking or if they're pressing something like a sidestep into a button, which can be really common. They sidestep into a jab or sidestep into some other button, doesn't matter what. You can catch people with this and count with them. It's really, really good when it comes to that. Now let's talk about the next one, Down Forward 1. And Down Forward 1 strings in general. So Down Forward 1 is a good mid. By itself, it's not bad, but it's slow, it's 15. Unlike the other generic Down Forward 1s, it is 15. But it is plus 9 on hit, which you can see via the animation as well. It's a lot of plus. But it's also a lot of minus on block, which is minus 7. It's not minus 9, but it's minus 7, which is also a lot of minus. The good thing is, about this move, that we have a down forward 4, which is a string, right? Down forward 1, 2, which is a new addition. This is a heat engager, beat into the high. And we have another new addition, down forward 1, down forward 2. This is also a new move which mainly should be used for combos to terminate your opponent, like this, right? But now let's talk about the usage for down forward 1 and its strings. So first let's talk about down forward 1 4. Usually this down forward 1 and down forward 1 strings can be used as a mix-up option, but usually at the wall. So, if you want to mix someone up with a low and you think they're gonna duck, you can use this move, because this will give you a wall splat with a decent damage. Alright, decent damage. Of course, the risk of it is that it's a high. They can duck it and they can launch it for it. And it's exactly the same thing with this. Although you can also use this outside of the wall. For maybe punishment purposes or some other purposes, right? Because this move is also good on block. Zero and forces crouch. It's very, very important to notice. So you can use this outside in the neutral. Because it's zero, forces crouch, and you can still continue pressure. Well down for the one four is minus 3. You can still continue pressure here if you select the correct option, but it's still a little bit different. So, that's for these two moves. But now let's see the last one, down forward 1, down forward 2. So this is not a natural mid mid. We can block the second hit, and we got hit by the first one. And this move, in my opinion, has two utilities. One is it's for people who duck down forward 1, 4 on block, like let's say they block this, not block this, duck this, right? Or they duck this, the second one. You may check them with this mid, this one right here, and this will wall splat them because just this move is a wall splat by itself. So at the wall, it's gonna be stronger than normal. That's why I wouldn't really recommend using it outside of the wall. But the down forward one, down forward two can also be used in another way. It's a counter utility. So some counter down forward one, down forward two. The down for the one is on comfort. Natural, right? And it will wall splat. You do decent damage, like this one. As I said, it's not optimal, but decent enough damage already. So it's really, really good when it comes to that. These two utilities. Other than that, you just have to remember that on block it's minus eight. And you can sometimes set up your punch parry for this, but we're going to be talking about punch parry a little bit later, because it has its own weaknesses. Okay. 
Now let's talk about the next one, which is a down for three straight. Which is another pretty good move, and it usually should be used at the wall, in my opinion. Now why? Why am I saying that? So down for three straight. Down for three by itself is minus seven. It's very similar to down for one, but it's three frames slower, so it's 18 frames faster. So it's plus nine on hit, just like down for one, and minus seven on block, just like a down for one. But this has a an hit mid extension that is 26 damage, and that's natural. Sometimes you can even hit confirm this, but it's not easy to do. And I would not really rely on something like this. But on hit, you have to remember this plus five. This looks like this plus nine. It really does. But it's plus five. So be very careful when it comes to just, you know, using this move and then trying to hell sweep after it or something like that, which is pretty common. Because if the opponent presses, most likely they're gonna win. So downboard 3-2 is a great move, but minus 11. So it's punishable on block. It's not the best of punishes, they won't get something too strong. They only get the, the, either their 10 frame or 11 frame or if they have it. But it's still punishable, right? A mid-mid. But the best part about this move is the third extension, which is the 1. So the 1 on block is minus 14, and on hit, it wall splats, so it knocks them away. Normal hit. So at the wall, even if they try stepping this, they will at least get wall splatted in the decent amounts of damage, right? That's why I'm saying to use that the wall most of the time, because movement will also get caught. But, the other thing which is also very, very good to remember is the charge-up version. So this charge-up version also will wall splat, will also deal more damage. But the important part is, it will make the move safe, but not only safe, it will make the move plus 18 at the wall. Well, outside of the wall, you'll most likely just get go back to neutral most of the time, because there's such a pushback. So, this is the pushback that has outside of the wall, and it's only plus 11 instead of plus 18. You can check them with something like a long-range move, if you have it, like on the backboard, but most of the time, the range is not enough. So that's why at the wall, it's so much stronger, because if they block this at the wall, they're in an instant mix-up situation. Instant. They cannot do anything against step here, they can't backdash because there's a wall, obviously. And they can't press because they're in minus 18, which is a lot of moves. You don't get anything guaranteed here, but you get a free mix-up attempt with either your health sweep, or any other low, or your strong emits. And for the mix-up options, I will usually say that the move is a mix-up option when I am talking about it. Like I said with down forward 1, it's one of your mix-up options that you can use at the wall, right down forward 1. Forward, right? That's one of the options you can use here, but as I said, be careful about the high because it is duckable. So that, that's it about the down forward 3 string, and the main weakness it kinda has is that it's steppable, the last hit, and it's interruptible. So be very careful and you have to mix it up. And I almost forgot. If you do have the right read that they're gonna press, this gives you plus 25, and this plus 25 gives you guaranteed moves. That means that at the wall, if you get this counterfeit, this is guaranteed. Down forward, down forward. Into the wall combo, into a lot of damage. All of this is guaranteed. So that makes this move really strong if they try to press. And even in the open, if they try to press here, you get dash electric for free. If only I could get it. If only I wasn't bad. But yeah, if you dash an electric here, this is a combo. They cannot escape this. This is a true combo into an electric combo. It's not that easy to do the dash electric here, but it's possible, and I think it's worth doing and worth learning. So, very strong move, but be careful because it's minus 14. Some characters can launch it, like Xiaoyu, Brian, Lars, just like a, as I said on back 1 2 on block, exactly the same way. Okay, now let's talk about one of his uh, other best mids. His mids are usually decent to use. Most of the time. Not all the mids, obviously, but yeah, I'm gonna be talking about the ones that are getting support for. Support 4 is a very, very good mid that he has because it's a 19 frame mid, which is not that slow. It's on the slower side a little bit, but it's not that slow. 19 is good. And it's plus 4 on block, which is what's very important. So plus 7 on hit, plus 4 on block. 
is very very important and it also has this counter property which is a knockdown if you have 3 4 4 4 Right? We like 3 4 4 4 because it gives you a flip on the opponent and it gives you a good mix-up opportunity to dash forward. Yeah, forward forward. This move is amazing because of the plus frames and you can just control frames really well with this. That means you can freely sidestep after this if you're really gonna press something that's steppable. And you can also freely pressure them if you think they're not gonna do anything. Right? But if, if they step, something like a down forward 4 is amazing. If they step to the left, right? It's very, very strong. That's why I mentioned down forward 4 is one of the best things you have because you can actually control people stepping to the left. Like after down forward 4 on block. But this usually just refers to people on uh, player 1, but I'm not going to talk about that now. Down forward 4 is just good to check people if they sidestep to the left. If they sidestep to the right, you can use some other moves, like sometimes electric will work, right? Forward forward electric. Only after electric. And there we go, forward forward into electric. On block though, not on hit. Something like this, if they sidestep to the right, this might catch them. Or forward forward to down forward to 1, this might also catch them, but you have some other options when it comes to the other side step direction anyway. So yeah, forward four is a very good move, but the weakness it has is that it's linear. It has decent range when it comes to like horizontal range, right? Like this one. It's not the worst, it's not the best, but it's decent. You can hit from here, which is okay already. Decent. But it's very weak to sidestepping either direction, where it can very easily be stepped in either direction. So be very careful when it comes to using these moves. That's why something like this into this is very useful to stop people from stepping. Or this into this if they step the other direction or some other stuff like that. Even back to can be useful. I'm going to talk about back to a little bit later too in the later part of the section, of the midsection. So now let's talk about the up three. Uh, before I talk about up three though, I want to talk about that the fourth four is also one of your options for mix-ups. So let's say your opponent is in a lot of minus frames or at the wall and you want to mix them up with either a lower or a mid. Forward 4 is one of the options, one of your mix-up options. As I already said, I'm gonna talk about and just say it out loud if a move is a mix-up option or not. Forward 4 is indeed one of them. Because not only is it the mix-up option that will make them duck and get hit for 20 damage, plus 7, it's also good on block which will leave them full crouch and plus minus 4. So really, really good. Now let's talk about another mix-up option, which is one of his best ones at the wall. It's up three or up forward three, both, both work. The only difference between these two is the forward momentum that up forward gives. So up forward gives forward momentum like this, but up three makes him stay in the same position he was at and just does the move. But this move is very, very good at the wall because it's a straight out wall splat and it's 19 frames fast. And it is safe in minus 9. And the best thing about it is the up 3 version, if you do it, has a lot of pushback. As you guys can see, much more pushback than the up forward version. So you can use this pushback to either backdash to make something with or sidestep to make something with. Or you can even press something into it because most people might dash in into a button or something similar. So it's really, really useful and this is one of the mix-up options we have is one of the mids, but usually at the wall. It can be used outside of it as well, but at the wall is where it's strongest. Now let's talk about another mix-up option. So the mids that are mix-up options are really, really good to know and you have to know them. And this is one of the best ones in neutral, it's 4 4 3. So the main strength this has is of course the normal launcher very very good and can be used as a mix up in your wave dash like you wave dash a lot you make them duck in a particular timing you can catch them with forward forward three it's a dormant launcher you do the right combo right you can do something like this and combo them for decent damage yeah forward forward three is one of the things that you can use a mix up option but usually outside of the wall it's very important do not ever use this at the wall it's really not worth it really really not worth it and also do not use it after hell sweeps but i'm going to talk about this after i actually cover hell sweeps in the load department so 443 it's very very good very very useful 
but the weakness it has is it's very very steppable to the left it's also steppable to the right not as much but still steppable to the right so this will be very easily stepped to either direction not either direction but left very easily steppable and right moderately steppable right so be careful be very careful about using this move especially if your opponent likes to sidestep after certain situations or wave dashes but on block if they do block it it's still decent it's only minus three for you that means you can either sidestep either direction or back dash to make something with if they try to retaliate if they don't of course you can also respect it and be patient or you can also go in and try to mix them up even more that's for port 4 3. it's a very good mid but the weakness it has it's linear and it's a little bit on the slower side because if you use it in the wave dash it becomes even slower than normal right if it's a forward forward move and because you're using that for wave dash you might make it a lot slower than 20 a lot slower so people will usually duck and then stand up when they see it right be very very careful about using this move because they might just either not get hit at all just be on block or sidestep it and launch you for it but now let's talk about one of the best moves i think this might be his best move in this game because i don't think he will exist in the game as a character without it it's forward forward move. so this move is a new addition and it's very strong this is his best mid by far in my opinion by far so forward forward 2 is a 16 frame long range mid. As you guys can see, it hits even from there, right? I'm trying to do it fast, it still hits. And you can extend the range if you forward forward long enough, right? So it's very, very far hitting the mid. That can hit from even 3 range sometimes if you extend it correctly. And the most important part is if you are in mid range, this will track really well. If you do something like a wave dash, forward forward 2, right? Or forward forward extended 2. That can also work. So, the utility of this move is very strong in mid range. And the other utility it also has is to just check people. One of the best things this move gave us is that it removed a very strong anti tactic against Gaz. Before like in 8, for example, it was very strong to just dash in and duck against the Kazuya player because he doesn't want to just throw out his mids he doesn't want to do it because his mids weren't that strong before this and they were mostly unsafe but now this gives you an option to check people from far away with a mid that's also safe in minus 8 or minus 9 somewhere along the lines right usually it is at minus 9 so it's very very good when it comes to that and it also has a slight pushback just a slight pushback so that slight pushback that forward forward 2 has can create enough space for you to either back dash something sidestep something or even press something so it's very good on hit because it's a heat engager right we're going to heat into instant mix up we're going to be talking about this in the heat heat section or you can use, use it on block as well because it has decent now what does the weaknesses this move has? The main weakness this move has is that you can sidestep it to the right way easier than to the left. So if you sidestep it to the right, it will be a little bit easier to sidestep, although you can still make a track with your wave dashes, right? If you do it correctly. So this move is very, very strong when it comes to that. But it can be very easily steppable if you're close range. So if you do something like a jab forward forward two, right? Even on hit, they can be they, it can be steppable. Even on hit, plus 8. You can do it very fast, as fast as possible. And maybe that will track. But if you don't do it as fast as possible, it will be steppable. So, close range forward forward twos. That's a little bit on the weaker side. But other than that, this is a great checking tool from long range with a mid. Which is amazing to have as a Gazia player. Because you can usually duck you and duck your electrics. Like, you know, dash duck like I talked about. And forward forward 2 can also be used as a mix-up option. So this can be mixed up very well with all your lows. All of them. Because they can't step it well. And if they duck, they'll get hit. And it also goes in the heat. 
which is your strongest state, which is everyone's strongest state, but because your strongest state is, is heat mode. So with that, port 402 is another mix-up option that we have. We, can, we already covered like three in a row, but I think we're going to cover even more. Since we're talking about new moves, let's talk about this one as well. CD 1 plus 2. I'm going to be honest with this one, I did not uh, experiment with this enough. Not at all, but it's a minus 6, 24 frame hit from Crouch Dash. So it's a CD 1 plus 2. On hit, it knocks them away very far. And on count hit, it gives you a launcher, which can give you decent damage, right? In the 80s even, if you do the correct combo. So, this move, as I said, I didn't experiment enough with it, but the main weaknesses this has, from what I can see, is that it's on the slower side on 24, and it's very easily steppable. So this move is very, very linear to both sides. That's one of the weaknesses it has. But if you condition your opponent to not step, it can be a very strong move, because on the block, minus six so it's only minus six with this much pushback so you can either whiff punish someone for trying to press in this situation or continue your pressure because they're scared to press in this situation so it's not bad at all and the one thing i also want to mention is that this animation looks like an extra wave dash like this punch where kazuya just uh, swings his arm back it might be confused for a hell sweep so they might duck it just because of instinct. That's also worth mentioning. So this is also another mix-up option we have, but be careful because it's very linear and so a little bit on the slower side. Next one is CD3 plus 4. This one. As I said, guys, it's going to be a long guy. So this move is usually used against highs. So if you want to go in against someone, it will mix them up. But you're afraid of a certain high coming, like for example a Steve back one, or you're afraid of a Fang player just doing a 1-2 at you because that's all they do when you try to go in. We might try to do this move because it works as a mid mix-up and also works as a high crush, so it will crush all highs if you'll avoid them. And on hit, this gives a guaranteed forward forward forward. Which is really good. Right? But have to be aware that it is punishable. It's minus 11 on the wall. In some ranges and angles, maybe it can even give a launcher. But I would not, I would not do this as a consistent thing. Like sometimes this four actually picks up and you get a launcher. But it's not reliable at all. And I wouldn't even try doing it almost ever, unless it's a controlled situation. Like maybe after a healthy vortex. But I wouldn't even try it. Is what I'm saying. It's not worth it. But this is one of your mixed options as well. Most of the time, outside of the wall, because at the wall, it won't give you much. You have much better options at the wall, like up 3 as I mentioned. Next one I want to mention is Fort Fort 4. This move is also one of the best mids that we have, because it's a safe mid, it's minus 9. Gives decent pushback even on block, not bad pushback at all, right? Decent. But it is minus 9. And it's also decently fast, it's 17, but it's a forward forward move, it will come out at 18, it's fastest, and most of the time it will come out way slower than that, maybe at like 19 or 20, depends on how you, how you do it, right? But the best usage of this move is in knockdown situations, so when you knock it down after forward 1, 1, 2, for example, you can do that forward 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 there, because it will work as a mix-up option, so this is also a mix-up option, because it's a mid, right? If they duck, they're going to get hit. It's a mid. But it will also work as a don't stay on the ground option. So basically as a anti-ground option. If they do stay on the ground, this will hit them grounded, just like in this, this situation, right? And it will flip them over. If they stay on the ground, this is grounded, it will flip them over. Sometimes they can whiff, especially if they side roll in the direction, but it's still very good. Especially if it's plus 5 on hit. And it's also a launcher on combo, right? It's really, really good when you catch that. But you have to be very careful about these combos because for me, the combos that you put for four are a little bit different. And if you want to go easy mode, you can do something like this, right? But these combos after this move is something I dislike personally. Okay. Now let's talk about uh, another mix of option, which is Swastang's Jade. 
Now this mix-up option is a little bit too iffy to do, because if you do wave dashes into all step 2, it will catch sidewalkers and sidestep duckers or sidewalk duck duckers, right? If they sidestep into a duck, sidewalk into a duck, or something similar, or just sidewalk in general, it will catch them. But the very big minus this move has is that it's minus 16, 18, my bad, it's minus 18. So it's minus 18 on block, so it's very launch punishable. So you have to be careful about the, throwing this move out, and not to mention it's hard to do in your wave dash, because it requires something very technical, which is a wave dash cancel into a lost landing move. Basically cancel with a back input and the two to make this move come out. So this move isn't that useful most of the time, but sometimes you can use it on hard reads, and you can also use it with something like a wave dash duck wall instead of a canceling the wave dash. But be careful, it's launch punishable, as I already said. Now let's talk about the parry. I also want to talk about this move. So this move, it is a wall splat at the wall. But, to be honest, I don't see much utility of this at the wall at the moment. Because we do not have too many moves that can make people get parry. It's like a parry bait, basically, is what I, what I call it. Something like down forward 1, down forward 2, which I already mentioned. It's minus 8, but this parry comes out in 3 frames. So it will not parry jabs, which is what's important here. If it did parry jabs, that would be amazing. I mean, really good. It would be pretty decent, right? At the wall especially. But outside of that, it will only parry like down forward once, which is also decent. But you have to be very aware that uh, this move is still risky to throw, to throw out. It can track sometimes, and it is safe on block. It's minus nine. But it's slow, it can be countered, and sometimes can be stepped, and it can be launched. So be careful. The main utility for this move, in my opinion, is uh, using it against moves, like against punches, because it's a punch pair, that are in strings. So something like, I don't know, Dragon Up, Back for Two, maybe. I think that can be parried. I'm not too sure though, don't quote me on that. But yeah, you get what I mean. Similar strings that usually are either safe or you can't do anything about them. This move will be useful because you can punch parry it. That's like the main utility for this move for me personally. Even though I don't use it much like that, I just have to get used to it. Okay, next what we're going to talk about is sidestep 3. So sidestep 3 is a normal hit knockdown, 23 frame mid, which will usually come out slower because it's a sidestep mid. So this move, it is also a counter launcher, right? It's a weird launch with sideways, but it still gives decent damage if you do that combo. Pretty decent damage. The main utility of this move is when you try to keep someone out. You're basically telling them, you know, don't come any closer, I have this move. So be scared of this move. But, in my opinion, this move is pretty useless because we have 442. So this move does exactly what this move does, outside of the counter utility, of course. But, it has way less weaknesses. So the main weaknesses of this move is that its range isn't as good as it seems. It will whiff more than you think, like there, right? And it's very weak to sidestep it, like, like that as well. That was very weird with. But, port 2 as I already talked about, is not weak to sidestepping, can be used as a mix-up tool, has a good on-hit effect unlike this, right? Which just knock knocks them down a bit, go back to neutral. This is a straight-out heat engager. So 442 does everything sidestep 3 does, but better in every way. So I don't advise using this move that much, because we have this. Might as well use this. Okay, so that's about sidestep 3. Now let's talk about the rocket. So this is another wall standing move that's very, very good when it comes to checking people whether you are in crouch. If you want to check someone with a decent mid, this is your go-to option. It's plus 8 on hit, decent frames. It's minus 9 on block, it's not punishable, decent. It tracks decently well, it still can be stepped. But it tracks decently well to both sides. The main issue this move has is its range. 
Yeah, sometimes whiff. If they just backdash once, most of the situations, right? So the range is not that good. But other than that, it even has a good comfort property with guaranteed board board four. But you can also get a guaranteed health sweep here if you're fast enough. It's not that easy, but it's also possible. Let me try to show this. There we go. So that's also guaranteed if you're fast enough. And it's not bad at all. Nuragen is usually your go-to mid to use for tracking. If they sidestep a lot, a lot. But, as I said, if you have 442, you shouldn't be using that too much. But I think the main utility this has is when you don't have heat. I'm going to talk about it a little bit later when I go into that state. But without heat is when this move shines the most, in my opinion. Because 442 is not a heat engager anymore. But 442 is still a very good. And I would most likely use that over this. Again. So that's about the rocket. Very good move, and it's also another mix-up option that you have, especially if you can wave dash cancel into it, right? The back one plus two, just like I already talked about. It's very good because it's also tracks well. Okay, that's about the rocket. We have uh, like a few more mids. So back two, and the back two strings in general. So back two is a check, just like down forward four. You can use it in the same way. This also tracks well to the left. The main weakness this has is that it's minus 8, right? And it's on the slower side because it's 14 instead of 13. Unlike down forward 4. You can also cannot hit confirm anything here like this. You cannot hit confirm this. And the strings it has, one's a high, right? This high, which is launch punishable, it's minus 3. So it's not even plus or 0 or anything, it's still minus, but it's launch punishable if they duck it. Also has an extension in the mid. It's all minus 14. So the string it has isn't the best. But now let's talk about the new string they gave it. Back to two. It's a mid mid, but it's not natural. And it's unsafe. Right? It kinda reminds me of down four three two. But this is natural. Yeah, it's minus 10, they can punish it. The main mind game this has is this laser right here, which makes it safe, and they cannot press after it. So they can't punish it with a 10 framer. The main utility this has, in my opinion, is that the wall, if you want to get the wall splat with the laser. But this is also a high that can be ducked and you can be launched for it. So be very careful. I don't think the utility of this, of this move is that good. Like the strings in general. Just back to it may be useful, but even the plus frames aren't good. Plus four is just. Like us cannot use low plus, plus frames that well as a character. Yeah. Three more move, moves left, three more mids, so one is back one plus two. So this also uh, a backswing blow, as you guys can see. So Kaz goes backwards a bit. It's not the best backswing blow in the game, but can sometimes evade stuff. And you go into a heat engager. It's a heat engager, you're going to heat. And it's safe with minus eight. So this move I think I should be utilizing a little bit more than I am, because I think it's good to do. The main weakness it has is it's a um, linear. It's a little bit on the slower side, plus 22. But it's safe. There's chip damage. And it goes into heat. So, back one plus two. Very good move if you want to like panic out of something. And speaking of another panic move, four or two, another one. This is your power crush. So if you want to like get out of some situation, some pressure situation, and you think they're gonna press either a high or a mid, just do this and get out of it, right? You absorb something, maybe you don't, just hit them, and just go back to neutral. You can also just dash in to mix them up even further, but just be a little bit careful because you don't have the best of frames here after, after hit. This is your main power crush option. The best thing about it is that it also wall splats, right? So wall splat can do a decent job. It's okay damage, not bad at all. Wall Splat is good, always good. And the last mid, mid I want to talk about that's somewhat also useful as well running through. So this move does 9 chip damage on block, which is great. It's a very, very big amount. And also gives a decent knockdown with 30 damage on hit. And gives plus 6 on block, right? It doesn't have a counter property or anything like that. And it can also be stepped, but to the right side, way easier to the, than the left side, which is very important for Gaz. 
very very important because most people will side step Kazuya to the left which is the way you want to step this character anyway but this move kind of covers that direction not, not fully of course but somewhat which makes while running 3 pretty decent option as I mean not bad at all your main utility for this move is to use it as a plus frame move to keep on the pressure and you can also mix someone up with this if they duck for long enough right it might actually work like that too and then we are actually done with the mids okay actually done that took a while i know this is a bit it's gonna be a long bit guys because i'm gonna be i wanted to make an actual good guide about us covering most of his moves that are actually usable to me personally now let's talk about the lows so the main low for me is down back four this is my favorite low one of my favorite lows so down back four is an amazing low because it does 18 damage 20 frames fast, it's not the fastest, but it's also not the slowest, it's decent. It's a st stature smash, st stature kick, basically. Plus 4, which uh, sets up down for to counter really well, if they try to do a down jab, for example, or a jab, or something similar. If they try to step block, they might, you know, block this. But it also sets up something like a down forward 4, which they cannot step, as I already said. Sets up something like a back 2, which they also cannot step to the left, which is also really good. It also sets up a jab if you're, if you're close enough, which sometimes they also cannot step, which is amazing, but of course it has its own weaknesses. But basically, the mind games this has is very, very good, because if they respect it, you can just do another one. Or if they respect it, you can just go in for a wave dash and just mix them up. And one of the best properties that are a little bit overlooked for this move is its counter hit utility. On counter hit, this is plus 17. Plus 17 means they can't do anything about the instant hell sweep. If I hell sweep here, they can't do anything about it. Like, let's say they try to side walk left. Right? After this. And I do an instant hell sweep. They cannot do it. It's impossible. This instant hell sweep is basically guaranteed if they try any kind of movement option, even a back dash. They cannot backdash away from this. You have that many plus frames. And other than that, you can also forward forward 3 here and they cannot sidestep this either. As long as you do it really fast, this is not as reactable. And the main reason this is not as reactable is because you do it very fast from a neutral input. Right? Unlike a wave dash which extends your forward sometimes, makes this more reactable, more seeable, because, you know, you're extending the move to more frames, like this. Something like this is way harder to see, because that's a neutral 4-4-3, and you're doing it as fast as you can, on a specific time. It's unsteppable either direction. They can't backdash it, because it will be blocked. I mean, it will be blocked if they backdash, obviously. But if they backdash duck, they will really hit, and stuff like that. So this move, that situation is amazing. Obviously, you can also use some other moves like 4 4 2 to mix them up as well. You don't need to do 4 4 3 at all. So, the counter utility down back 4 has is absolutely amazing. I love it. And at the wall, you can just mix someone up with something like this, right? With obviously another health suit as a mix up. Or you can just do another down back 4 if you want to keep it safe. Like counter down back 4 into another down back 4 if you want to keep it safe. So, really, really good. Now it's, but the weakness this move has is when you want to use this, you are usually very susceptible to counter hits, especially good counter hit pies. So something like Steve's back one comes to mind, something like Nina's forward two comes to mind, which is a hit confirm move, which is crazy to me. It's, uh, I think, 13 frames fast as well. Something like Nina's back four also comes to mind, or just good counter hit moves in general that are also mid. And not only counter it, something like a generic down forward 2 that Law or Shaheen or Paul has might be its vulnerability, right? That you can try to dash into down back 4, but you're just gonna get launched because they do a keep out move. Basically, keep out moves. Usually high, fast keep out moves, or mid, fast keep out moves. Both of them are very strong against it. But, if they do use that, you have to bait them and of course, punish them. And it's like a mind game it, it has, but the main weakness is that. And the thing that covers the highs is the down back three. So if they do high a lot, you do down back three. Let me put this on block all again. So this down back three 
is very, very good when it comes to avoiding their high checks. Think about Fangs 1 2 that I talked about because they want to check you with it all the time. Fang players love doing that. Or a Steve player that back once, it will avoid it. So this is what it's for. It's not plus, unlike down back 4, but it's one frame faster and it's only minus one. It's not that bad. And this minus one creates some mind game situations because sometimes if they jab, you might be able to sidestep it. If their jab is bad, who knows, right? Maybe it's maybe it's bad. Sometimes you can backdash some moves if you like have enough range like this, right? Because it has long range, you can backdash some after some moves. Or sidestep after some moves, or you can also press into some moves like a wall stand four. Because you're not in that much minus, so down back three is not bad at all. It also has a counter property, which makes the move plus seven and forces the enemy to crouch, which is very, very important, especially if you're playing on P1 side. Because if you're playing on P1 in this counter hits, they cannot sidestep your health suit. They can't do it. But if you're playing on P2, then they can't sidestep it. So be a little bit careful when it comes to that. Yeah. That's about down back 3 and most of its utility. You can use it as your main low poke, but down back 4 is way stronger, obviously. But this is a high push. So use it with care. Now we have another high push low, which is a little bit on the slower side, but has way better properties. Down 1 plus 2. So it's 23 frames. Some people can react to this. It's on the verge of being reactable. But since it looks like a wave dash, like, you know, if I do something like this, it will be very hard to react to. Because it actually looks like a wave dash, the start of the animation. It's a little, gonna be a little bit hard to react to. But, as I said, it's on the verge of being reactable. It's plus 3, low, 23 frames, and it's a counter launcher that deals very good damage, right? With this stuff, then you'll be up to uh, 77, I think, 76. Good damage. And it hits grounded. So it's a very good move if you're like expecting some highs, like jabs for example. And on block, it's only minus 40, so it's not launch punishable. The characters who can launch it are like a few of them, not a lot, like Azu himself can do it, Jin can do it, I think Raven can do it, and uh, maybe some other characters I can't think of right now. Like uh, Jun, Juno can also do it, right? But other than that, normally it's a much safer low. If they can't launch it, it's also counter launch it. But you, the main utility this move has is if you think they're going to use highs, especially if they want to use high strings. So this will counter launch them if they try something like that. Keep in mind, uh, not keep in mind, but imagine something like a Steve 1 to 1. Because Steve players also love to do that. To predict that, you can do this, and they will get counter launched for it. So it's very good when it comes to those kind of situations. Can also be used as a mix up in a way, but as I said, it's a little bit on the verge of being reactable, so I would be careful about that. Now, our main low the Azuya low, the Hell Swing, right? This is gonna be your highest reward low in the game. Not in the game, but in general. Right? You use this in your wave dash mix ups, and you make your opponent scared, so you make them want to either duck or sidestep. This is very vulnerable to sidestep luck. Right? And both versions of the health suit, by the way, the 401, the 404, both of them can be used to set up your uh, mix up opportunities. Both of them. The only difference is the one, this one, leaves them closer so it's way easier to do more stuff. But this leaves them further, which creates a different kind of mind game. But it's possible for both of them. And the 4-4 four four does 2 more damage. So you can figure out which one to use by yourself, right? Which one you prefer. Sometimes maybe 4-4 four four will be useful, because it also creates different kind of mind games, because it pushes them further. Maybe you want to go back to neutral and make them whiff something, you know, different mind games. But the main utility I found for 4-4, four four, which is really, really good, is for wall hazards, wall explosions, for example. If you want to create a wall explosion, very it's called very consistently then you do the 4-4 version this doesn't create an angle this creates a little bit of an angle on hit but this is a straight out hit so this is a very consistent wall explosion which also does more damage or a balcony break for example right so yeah it's good when it comes to that but outside of that 
It's okay. It does push them away, but it's okay. It can still be usable, especially because of the 2 free damage. But when it comes to lows, this is it for Gus. More or less, this is it for Gus, right? He doesn't have too many lows to choose from. Not too many. It's, this is already good enough. It's not bad at all, if you ask me. But he, what he lacks is faster lows to, you know, mix up his timing a bit. Because this, this, and this lows have almost same timing when it comes to their frames. Even when, the, when it comes to sweep, because this usually comes out in those kind of frames as well, like 18, 19, or 20, usually. But the other lows you can also utilize are his generics, like down 4 or down 3, which are the faster ones, right? But I have to be... I have to warn you that they are very risky. Like down 4 is minus 15 in this game, they can launch you for it. Most people can launch you for it. The down 3 is minus 17 in this game, and I'm pretty sure everyone can launch you for it. Or almost, maybe not Steve. So, yeah, be very careful about using these moves. But they can still be used. Do not be afraid to use them sometimes because it changes up your low times. Especially down 3. This has a lot of range. Okay. I think that's it about the lows as well. And we actually covered highs, mids, and lows for the generic guts, which is crazy. I think it might took me, I think it took an hour or something. Holy shit, it's gonna be a long bit, guys. Okay, now let's talk about the heat state. And this is gonna be very, very important because in heat, he is at its strongest. This is when Kazuya is at its strongest. And you don't want to use this too early in the game because you are gonna waste it and you're gonna get out of it. Because the weakest state he has is when he's outside of heat without any heat available. So, of course in heat he gains access to his heat smash. Let's do this real quick. So we don't, you know, hear that sound every time. So heat smash. So heat smash is a very, very good move. Obviously, heat smash. It has three weaknesses when it comes to like uh, whiffing on hits sometimes. It doesn't happen that well, that much, but it can happen. But it's usually a very good move because it's a minus 14 low, which not a lot of people can punish. Right? Not a lot of people can punish that. Like, not punish, but launch that. So Lars can launch it, Brian can launch it. And the Shaoyu can launch it, and maybe some other characters I can think of, but those are like the first characters I can think of that can launch this move. But other than that, no one else can. So it's very good, it's a low mix-up to supplement your health suit. But now let's talk about Ford 4 2 since I just did it. So this move, as I said, is the best move Kazuya has in general. It's an amazing, amazing move, right? Let me do this right here, real quick. Just so I have as much heat as possible. The board 4 2 now transitions into laser, which basically doubles the damage. Not basically, it actually doubles the damage. Right? 40 instead of 20. And gives you a lot of range. So it doesn't give you much frames. It's zero, you basically go back to neutral. But you are in your preferred range, more or less, right? Because Gaz prefers to be in this mid-range or a little bit longer range anyway. You don't, just don't want to be in close range. So you have to play mind games again in your preferred range. So it's not bad at all. Double damage, the preferred range for Gaz. And no chip damage. I mean, no recoverable health. The only weakness this move has, which is a big one in my opinion, I don't really understand it. Is that at the wall, so if you we go at the wall... It does one more damage, obviously, because of the wall splat. But what it doesn't do is wall splat, right? Which is a little bit weird, because the version without heat, let's say we just don't have heat. No heat, right? This one wall splats. So if you think about it, the version without heat at the wall is actually stronger than in the heat version. Which is very weird to me, because I don't think Heat should nerf any situation anyway. Like, this will do so much more damage than 40 or 41, right? Obviously. So, I'd say the Heat 4 2 is very stronger 
at the wall if the wall splats. So that's a little bit of a weird decision to me, which is a weakness because of the heat laser. Can't really control if you go into laser or not, which would be a great addition, by the way. Namco, please do that. Let us uh, choose to go into the laser state or not, please. But, yeah. That's the main weakness it has, but if you do get the wall splat, right? If you get wall splat like this, you get a very good OK situation because they're like right there, right in front of you. You can just mix them up. You have a good frame space. Okay. So outside of 442, which is amazing, we already talked about why it's good. It has the same properties as I already mentioned. Good tracking and stuff. Good mix up. There's also CD3, which is new. Right? This gives uh, extra damage in combos. You can use it in the neutral as well. It's not too bad because in the neutral, it's actually plus. It can be either plus four, plus three, or somewhere along the lines. But its main utility is in combos that you end it with CD3. It adds like four more damage most of the time and gives you decent Oki. I'll be talking about the Oki a little bit later when I cover some other heat moves as well. But the, oh, the main reason I like this is before I cover all heat moves, at the wall, you see the three ender. Let's say you do a combo and end with CD3, right at the wall like this. This actually gives you very good Oki tools. So what this does is, if they try to stand up with back, this is guaranteed. This is just guaranteed that they try to stand up with back, which is usually what they try. And they cannot tech roll here, they can't do it. They want to get rid of this, not get rid of this, but avoid this. They have to stand up with up, so they have to hold up. But if they do that, you can use lows to mix them up. Among the lows I mentioned, you know, like down back four or some other stuff. Down back four being one of the best ones, or you can also use Telsu if you want to, right? You can also use that. But okay. It's really, really good because of that. Dombek 1, 2 is also guaranteed there. They hold back, so... Very, very good. That's about CD3. So after CD3, let's talk about CD1. So this now has an extension to this. But outside of just CD1, we also have to talk about the Hellsuit extension. Which basically adds this to the Hellsuit. Now why do I like this? This is one of the best additions he has. One of the best ones. Because when after this... He actually gets OP, a very good one, because the opponent cannot do anything but get up normally without tech rolling, right? They can't tech roll. So the mix-up is very simple, with one of the new moves, which is a laser. So this is a low laser he also gets. He also gets this mix-up after CD3, which I wanted to talk about, right? The low laser. He also gets this mix-up. He can also use back 4 or some other low. This is in the neutral. You can mix it up with any move you want. Usually it's either 444, 442, or any of the other moves that I talked about, which are mix up options, right? Other than that, the CD1 is very important to dash before your low laser mix up. Very, very important. Because otherwise, it's not a mix up. So when you dash, you actually create space for him to get mixed up with 442 and the down laser. Otherwise, it's not a mix-up. Otherwise, they can just block it and that's it. So it's really good because of that. It also works with the Hellsuit extension. You just dash the flow laser. Right? And mixed up with the 442, for example. But the best thing this gives us is at the wall, OK. So if you do this, right? This is guaranteed as long as they don't instantly tech roll or as long as they don't side roll on the ground. So this is very, very strong. Because let's say they are just holding back, which usually if they're holding back, they're not tech rolling, right? Like this situation will, will usually happen when they tech roll there. Usually happen only against the computer, only. So let's say you do this wall combo, right? Then something like this can be guaranteed that they hold back, which is very, very strong. It happens the same way with this end. They hold back, it's also guaranteed. So it's very good, especially since this move is a heat engager. 
So what that means is if you do something like this, right? You do that, and you get cube, you'll get a free launch. This is just a free launch. We do a lot of damage. So this is very strong because with his uh, CD1 Oaking, basically. If they stay on the ground, you get guaranteed 4 4 4 and the good stuff, basically, is what you get. The good stuff. So, yeah, keep in mind, this is a very, very useful thing to know in Heat. It's one of your best OK situations, so definitely use it. Now let's talk about some other Heat moves that are all also added to Gaz. One of them is this, Stomp. Right, down back 2 plus 4. So this move is something I really want to be good. But the main reason I think it's really, really bad because is because it's not unblockable. That's the main reason. So this is a low, 24 frames of low, which is minus 19 on block. So the main reason it's really bad is because of this. On hit, if this was guaranteed, maybe it could be usable in some ways. Because you get this as a mix-up option, you get health Reaper as a mix-up option, one plus two as a mix-up option, and you can also cancel the wave dash even though it's hard. Right? You can also cancel it into more mix-up options with different timings. It's hard to cancel this. I don't have a good easy time doing it. But I'm pretty sure it's possible. Right? But other than that, I don't see much utility on this move. I don't think it's good because of that block break. This. It doesn't make sense to me that it's not unblockable. So, mostly a useless move right now, anyway. Though sometimes you can use it. The next one is the Devil's Roar, this one. So usually the main weakness Gaz has is that he is very susceptible to pressure. But this move basically says get away from me, right? I don't want your pressure. And it's, a, it's not a parry. This is a legit power crush move that's an AOE around Kazuya. Right? Not a parry. You just can hit someone with it like that. So it's very good because of that. You can use it to let make people get off of you. It's very useful. The biggest weakness this move has is the heat usage. That's the biggest one. It's, it consumes half your heat. Basically half your heat. You can only use it twice. That's it. Okay. The next one I also want to talk about is... Um, I think 112 should be mentioned. It's not the best thing, but... So 112 forward this adds quite a bit of damage to you, right so usually this does 23 damage but if you hold this straight forward after one one two and after it keep holding forward it will deal eight more damage which is decent but doesn't give you any okay because you're back turn as you guys can see guys it's back turn here not good okay offense here the only reason i would use this is if either this will kill or if your back is to the wall so you want to get away from the wall and make them be at the wall instead. So the utility this move has is either of those two, because just one one two I think gives way better options when it comes to OP. Okay. So that's useful to know. And the next one is sidestep two. So sidestep two is a mid that launches instantly. It comes out decently fa fast in a 17. But it's launch punishable in minus 15. So this move is very, very risky to throw out. It's only on hard reads. The only time this move is going to be okay to throw out is going to be against characters that can't launch this. Sound like Steve maybe comes to mind, right? But other than that, it's not that useful of a move, personally speaking, right, for me. But now, let's cover the one of the best ones, which is his uh, heat dashes. For me personally, I think his heat smash is not actually his heat smash. His actual heat smash is this. This one right here. This is actual heat smash. Because I fe feel like down back 1-2, the dash is much stronger than the heat smash. So down back 1-2 is a 13 frame mid. That you can transition to on even on hit and it gives you a unit for 4 4 or a guaranteed stomp for 50 damage. Right? It's really, really good. And not only that, but on block, it becomes plus 5 in neutral. 
But the important part is that it becomes plus 18 at the wall. So this is very, very important. It's very, very strong. That's why I think this is his actual heat smash and not his heat smash. You know, the low. So down back 1-2 is an amazing, amazing move. In heat, it's very strong. But you have to be very careful about using it because it will consume all of your heat if you dash after it, right? Just be careful about that. Some other stuff he also has is he dashes back four, which is also great because it's a launcher. So if you back four and two dash, you do electric combos here, it will give you a launcher. It does decent damage, it's not the best, but it's okay. Even though you're using three electrics, it's like 64. And you can use that basically as a whiff punisher, or if you think they're gonna step, you can just use this, right? Into the heat dash. Other thing he also has is this, which is also a launcher. This is another panic tool he has that he can use as a launcher, right? Multiple electrics, if you do it, it's possible. It's a little bit hard after this specifically, I don't know why. But you can just combo after that, do like 60 damage or something similar. So that's one of them. And now one of the most useful ones, I'll tell you down back one of course, it's down forward one too. This is your 15 frame move. And it's 15 frame launcher. So you can do the same combo with the three electrics, right? If you do it correctly, this will hit. I just messed it up. Let me try it once again. There we go. So it does decent damage. It's like 70, yeah, 75. So it's okay. So now we have a 15 frame launcher, but just in heat if you use a heat dash. So you can use this as a whip punisher, or you can use it as a mid mix up as well. Just be careful, second one's a high and conduct it. Be careful about that. And then other than that, I think that's about it for devil mode. We also have that bow laser as I talked about, but it only can be used in situations when they're grounded. It's a grounded move like a stomp, you not know, like a stomp. So it's not the best move to use in the neutral. You can't even use it in the neutral. So in Oka situations, it's great. But now let's get to the end of the vid, which I can't believe I'm here. I, I talked about the, almost everything, which is crazy, right? I could have talked about even more about stuff, but I tried to make it brief, but it still took this long. Okay, now let's talk about the, the situation when Kazuya is at his weakest, when he has no heat available and he's outside of heat. So this situation is very similar to Dagon 7's gods, very, very similar. But he can still use 442 as a move. You know? Not even though it's much weaker now because it just gives a knockdown. Into basically neutral. You can also use CB1 plus 2 more. Right? But you're just playing a cause without any good options for like Oki, any good options for risky, not risky, but strong mids and stuff like that. 442 is of course very good to have no matter what. You can still use Kalsu to 442. It's still doable, not bad. You, can, you still have this kind of charge ups and stuff. But other than that, he's much, much weaker in no heat state. But you can still play him normally, right? You can electric whip punish, electric keep out. You do decent damage still if you do the right combos, right? They might be whippable, but if you connect them, they will work. Okay, damage with 74, it's not too bad. But yeah, no heat mode is his weakest state. But now, as I said, this will be briefed, no heat mode won't take much because I talk about literally everything. I did basically every move, more or less. Hopefully I didn't forget something. Maybe I did, man, but whatever. So let's summarize and then just say what Kazuya is as a character for me personally. So him, his main weakness is being in this range. He does not want to be in close range almost at all. Because he can't really control people with his moves as well because his poking isn't as good with fast moves. Like fast mids, he has like something like this and this are not good to throw out not at all sometimes they can work but they're just not good to throw out so his close range is not that good so you want to be in somewhat this range right mid range not too far but what you want to be able to do is whiff punish with electrics in the range you are at so you assume they're gonna press something and move a little bit forward so you don't need to be in this range for your electrics to instantly hit you need to be in this range, so you assume they're gonna press something and move forward for you, and then you will punish them with an electric. 
But outside of that, you can also throw these out in this range. Since they're so hard to whip punish, so they just don't come close to you. If they try ducking you, you can also forward forward 2 and throw this out. Right? Just throw forward forward 2 out and control them with forward forward twos, which is a mid control tool, which is amazing to have. So, usually you are in that range, but the strongest thing about the character is his uh, oppressive 50 50 and just um, his oppressive um, presence here in general. Because what he does is he makes opponents really, really scared about his 50 50 and usually makes them press a lot. And it is usually true, and it's very, very much true when it comes to his heat mode. When you go into heat, your opponents are gonna get very scared. What that means is they will want to press so they do not get mixed. That makes your faster moves, like down forward 2 for example, or some other fast moves, way stronger. That's why I think your down back 1-2, which is a fast mid, is your best heat smash. Basically it's your heat smash. Because you can use it to control your opponents without them pressing. It's very, very good. So yeah, that's his biggest strength, because hell sweeps are scared, forward forward 2 get mixed, 443 can also get mixed, but be careful because it helps with Vortex 443, don't do that, you do 442s here. You can use some other stuff as well, but usually 442 is your best option. So, yeah, that's more or less it. I literally covered all moves, all highs, all pits, and all lows. It took me like an hour and a half. It, it took me a while, right? It took me a while. But, I think I actually covered almost everything about the character. His main strengths, are that you can control frames if you like use moves yourselves and your main weakness is people pressuring you or people counter hitting you with good highs because that's what you usually want to go in with right don't high crush much so be careful about that stuff control your range try to control your character but the biggest issue about this character for me it always was like this i don't have a problem to be honest i call it an issue but it's not really a problem is that you need to ha have a lot of matchup knowledge against every other character. And I mean a lot. Because you are very technical, so your sidestep pun punishes, like sidestep electrics, have to be precise. Your electrics have to be precise. You have to know what you're blocking, what you're ducking, what mind games you're playing. And like way, way more than any other character in the game, in my opinion. Way more. Because someone like uh, Xiaoyu, for example, doesn't need to know a lot of matchups. And Xiaoyu in this game is very strong, for example. They can win without knowing that. Same with some lily, lily, some lilies, right? If they play a certain way, if they don't play defensive, they play aggressive, they might not know some matches, but win anyway. But Az is one of the characters that kind of needs it. Especially in the, uh, the more higher level you go, he will kind of need it. Even though he can win without them sometimes too, because he's uh, much more impressive in this game when it comes to his 50-50s. And when it comes to some of his frames at the wall as well, and his wall situation is amazing. But, outside of that, you still need a lot of extensive matchup knowledge, which is kind of his thing. I don't dislike it, but it can be considered a minus. So, yeah, YouTube, big thank you for watching. I know this took a while, I'm sorry it took this while, but I also wanted to make this as good as possible. Mention almost everything, I even have notes for this. I even mentioned mix-up options, you know, for mids, obviously. The lows are all, all of them are mix-up options, you can use them. Maybe not the reactable one, that one plus two, but most of them you can you can use this mix-up options, maybe not the generic ones as well. You can just be careful about them. So yeah, once again, thank you watching for watching YouTube and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Ho hopefully Hopefully I'll cover some more Gazia stuff, maybe I'll discover some new tech, maybe some patch notes, he's gonna get buffed. Who knows? But yeah, till later.